All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to another update on this uh, Monday, Monday night, January 8th, 2024. It's about 11.51 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity on the uh, Earthquake 3D globe. Let's see what we got, 1.4 in Alaska, and also uh, should be some uh, a red flag down here somewhere, 2.8 in the South America region. Uh, still getting a little bit of activity down here across the Southern California region in the last hour or so. Uh, a handful of smaller quakes in the vicinity of the San Andreas Fault. And of course, we did see some movement outside of Ridgecrest uh, earlier this morning with a 3.1. Uh, a little bit of movement also up here across the coast range of Northern California. And way up here, we did see some movement across the uh, northern edge of the Cascadia subduction zone. Uh, for a 4.3 just off the coast and around the Queen Charlotte Sound area. Uh, I did check the trimmer out here just a minute ago. It doesn't look like there's too much elevated trimmer. Uh, about 150 epicenters of trimmer around the Seattle area, underneath this area, uh, down there into the subduction zone itself, about 35 to 45 kilometers. Uh, but aside from that, still looking at uh, very minimal trimmer conditions here over the past year. Our last uh, major trimmer, trimmer event uh, was back in 2022, back in October uh, 2022. So since then, uh, taking a turn for a little bit quieter conditions here. All right, uh, let's get back here to the map, see what else is going on. Some movement way up into the Alaska area as well. Uh, way north of the Alaska range, 3.8 uh, out here in the middle of uh, nowhere land, probably. 20 kilometers deep for that earthquake. Uh, this originally came in here as a 4.1, so a little bit of downgrade uh, going on there. All right, before we get uh, too far away from the states here, we'll check out some activity around Mount Rainier uh, with a little bit of activity. Uh, earlier this morning, a couple smaller quakes being reported out there. Uh, no major changes, though, across the Cascade Volcanoes. And uh, we've got one little earthquake uh, near Baker City, Oregon, 2.5. Don't see too much activity out here, but uh, there is fault systems listed up here on the map. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a handful, handful or two of earthquakes uh, near the Hebgen Lake Estates. Let's see what we got going on for the Yellowstone overview real quick. Looks like it's, uh, well, fairly quiet for the most part. There's that little two-pointer showing up across the Purple Mountain area and a couple other stations there earlier. Uh, this morning. But aside from that, uh, most of the country out here looks pretty quiet. Not a whole not a whole lot shaking in terms of earthquake activity. Did see some severe weather out there uh, earlier, and I think that's still continuing out here across portions of the south tonight. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Getting a trail of activity across the Fiji Islands area once again across this plate boundary. A return of a uh, some deep movement quakes down there, uh, well below 500 kilometers or so for a couple fours uh, earlier this afternoon. Uh, that should ultimately uh, amplify some conditions out here across the plate boundary. Looks like uh, some of that activity is already picking up with some deeper movement, uh, adding some further strain out here. Got to watch this area around Solomon Islands. We haven't really seen too much activity out here. Forgot to turn off my scanner. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me bring up the last seven days of activity out here. Solomon Islands area, fairly quiet. Haven't really seen uh, too much activity out here. So this is our little quiet zone. Got to watch that with that deeper activity uh, being triggered here tonight. Uh, so keep an eye on this region. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the New Zealand area. Um, looks like maybe a handful of smaller quakes as well. A deep, oh, deep three-pointer and a, a more recent, uh, is that 3.6? It's more recent. Looks like it around the, uh, North Island area. So a handful of earthquakes out there. Nothing major moving yet. Uh, there's all that activity stirring up across the, uh, Java Trench, Philippines area. Of course, this morning we did see a pretty decent sized earthquake. Uh, 6.7 earthquake uh, originally came in as a seven pointer did not trigger any type of tsunami or uh, any type of tsunami alert uh, since then looks like we getting uh, at least one aftershock there um, following that uh, earthquake 4.5 uh, 
Well, keep an eye on that. Uh, normally, we'll see a handful of aftershocks. We really haven't seen too much activity stirring up there uh, following that larger quake activity this morning. But it uh, uh, definitely looks like things are lighting up out here quite nicely across the Java Trench as well with a couple fives uh, coming in. Way up into the Kuril Kamachaka, we got a, a little earthquake this morning. Uh, yeah, just earlier this evening, it looks like. 4.3, 35 kilometers deep. The uh, big island of Hawaii out here in the Pacific. Got a line of activity here across the Helena Slump area. Uh, not a whole lot uh, around the Kilauea Volcano, though. Let's do a quick update uh, on that and see what's going on there across the uh, USGS map. Uh, and I have, I got these tilt meters in my bookmarks here, but, uh, just got a habit of checking these just in case I want to get into, uh, to, uh, some camera views or other instruments out here. Uh, looks like we're kind of going back up here in the last 12 hours or so. Uh, this is the last two days of inflation data there at Kilauea Volcano. Um, I did not mean to close that. I want to check out the 30 day map here. A little bit of leveling off here in in the last couple days, but it looks like we're starting to take a little turn uh, back up to inflation. So we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, currently not erupting, but uh, just a matter of time, I suppose, before we do see that uh, kick back up. Seismograph stations in the area show a handful of smaller quakes, but really nothing of concern. I don't really see any magma movement out there uh, in that area for now, as far as that registering on the uh, seismographs. Uh, let's see here what else we have here across the region way over here, Iran. Um, we got one earthquake here. That's a, that's 5.1 being reported there off the, uh, Sumatra area. Uh, a couple of fours out here today. Not a whole lot in the area. The latest one though, 4.2 Afghanistan, typical regions out here in the Eastern uh, area of that country. The Atlantic ocean. Look at that absolutely quiet even on the uh well we got one earthquake to report on the emsc model globe here in iceland uh, aside from that looks pretty quiet out there in the iceland area or in the uh, atlantic area let's go check out iceland see uh what's going on if there's any new updates to chat about uh the latest update was put out january 5th here a couple days ago so no new update to report from that area from the uh, icelandic uh, met office as uh, far as earthquake activity across the Iceland region, the last 12 hours still show some swarming up here, uh, specifically in this area. Uh, this is obviously uh, uh, some type of rift zone out here, I believe. It uh, doesn't look like there's... Um, uh, it has to do with volcanic activity. It looks like it's more uh, uh, plate stress in that region, but we'll kind of keep checking back on that. Not for sure what the uh, volcano activity out here has been like, but uh, um, it does look like it stretches up there somewhat, but we'll keep an eye on it. As um, far as the Grindavik area goes, down here across this area of Iceland, very, uh, well, down here. Look at that, nothing to report here in the last uh, 12 hours, so that's a little on the crazy side. Uh, let's check out the inflation across this area of Grindavik. This is the Savart Singhi area, four hour measurements. Uh, but this goes back to uh, back in October of last year. Um, far as the inflation data goes, the up still showing uh, some trending up. That's a little close, but uh, might be able to spot these a little bit better in the last couple of days here. Definitely taking a little turn upwards uh, on that chart. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, let's see, let's get back out of here and see what else is going on. Uh, as far as any major activity, doesn't look like it. Uh, we'll keep an eye on a few areas, obviously. Uh, space weather activity here from solarham.net does show a little bit of flaring going on. We are getting a little uh, blackout there on the global D layer absorption map. And let's see what is flaring out there. Looks like potentially, um, this area up here on the northwestern limb of the sun and also way out on the eastern limb. Uh, very uh, bright feature, so to speak, on this UV uh, filter ray. Let's see what we got. I guess it's being pinpointed out here as well on Kevin's site. Not named, an unnamed sunspot. That is uh, 
again looks like it's fairly active we'll get a better perspective of that tomorrow so we got this region kind of flaring right now and also up here these these sunspots goodness they have been uh, behaving oddly uh, sometimes they look promising as they come around the bend and uh, next thing we know when they're facing earth uh, they just disintegrate and um, basically uh, become less complex stable and uh, not a whole lot of flaring but we'll continue to watch that see if anything uh, wants to spark off some flares uh, but I think we'll have to watch that newer sunspot coming around the eastern limb um, right now 99% chance for a C flare M flare 45% chance X flare around 10 proton event around 10% chance or so as well uh, no major expected auroras in the forecast uh 20 percent or less are across the majority of the regions here over the next couple days uh far as the um severe weather potential out there it looks like currently still expecting some severe weather out there across that area tonight um and that includes of course uh the tornado potential there 10 percent area uh, for some strong tornadoes and some wind activity as well uh let me go over here to the windy map here it keeps getting down and down on the list uh, and see what we got out here far as current radar uh, imagery there's a lot of that storm system out there uh, well obviously making a whole lot of noise kind of late out there right now right um, that's going to be uh, three o'clock in the morning right Somewhere around there, four o'clock out here. That's uh, goodness. That's a lot of noise from all these uh, thunderstorms out here. Obviously, the severe weather potential will um, remain through the night. Some of these look like they may have a little rotation on them, but uh, oh well, you know, it's definitely something to uh, deal with. And this El Nino type pattern uh, always shows uh, a lot more elevated storms out here through the winter time in a uh, typical El Nino pattern. So that was uh, spot on. Uh, we still have yet to see any significant major storms out here across the West Coast, uh, far as um, you know our El Nino pattern. We should be getting hammered with storm after storm, but right now it's been aiming right at the Northwest here. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the current weather forecasting models there's the next storm coming into the uh, uh pacific northwest bringing with it a lot of cold air rain and snow that low pressure out here across the eastern portion of the country will continue to back out uh, further to the east and bring with it uh, a lot of that moisture and our next round of colder air comes back in as we head towards the end of um of the week and into the weekend looks like the severe weather potential may kick back up again uh, in these areas as we head into the weekend and um, wow look at that storm right there I wish that was a little bit further down south here we could use some of that moisture here in California these guys are just getting hammered and technically the spa the uh, storm prediction the climate prediction center showed that these folks up here were supposed to be drier than normal and these guys are just it's opposite um, you know hopefully that changes either way there's a lot of colder air dipping down here look how low that uh, uh those lines go into texas Let's see what we got for uh temperatures oh goodness man yikes that uh is possible air temperatures uh come on the 15th of january uh, those are some cold temperatures out there wow um so these are probably going to be low temperatures right for uh 1200z that's um yikes i know they get some uh cold temperatures out there on occasion but look at some of this much colder air coming into montana wyoming wow that's a lot of cold, colder air that's for sure um it looks like that's gonna not last too long but uh it is winter time so obviously we should uh be expecting it uh far as the west coast goes maybe into the 21st of january but man I, I just don't see any significant storms out here that's not good news here for california um let me see what the pacific jet's doing out here upper air dynamics 
See, uh, we got this split in the jet stream right now, and that's creating the drier conditions out here across California. Uh, shooting this jet stream way up north and bringing with it a lot of colder air down uh, from Canada southward into the states. And uh, until that goes away, it's hard to say if we're going to get... Uh, you know, some further storming out here. It looks like it wants to stay split, and I do not like that. But that southern jet here, look at that, going right up into the, into the uh, portions of the south again. Uh, and this goes to about January 25th. I guess we'll just have to see how this plays out, and I'm hoping this goes away. Um, this jet pattern like that being split is not good news for rainfall out here in California. So we'll, uh, we'll kind of check back on it from time to time, see if it changes. All right, folks, uh, what, do we, what else we got here? Seismograph stations. Oh, what have we got? Something going on in New Zealand there. Got a little shaking, it looks like, from a 5.7 earthquake just striking right now uh, up at the surface levels of the Tonga Trench area. That's from the EMSC. Uh, I just I noticed that signature right there of a, a distant earthquake. Had this been closer, obviously it would it would flatline the seismograph station and look uh, you know like a well-defined spike of a signature. This here is a distant type wave uh, showing up there on New Zealand uh, from a 5.7. Um, USGS reporting on it yet? No, they're not. So that activity is going to be right about here. Uh, one thing I have noted here is that we have noticed a couple different uh, earthquakes here in this area at the shallow levels. Uh, it seems like following this deeper movement here, we're getting that further stress upstream here. And a lot of times that does tend to pop some large earthquakes here in this area. Um, if there's not enough strain, most of the time the migrational strain will... Uh, run across this area here is typical but uh, looks like this area definitely wants to uh, keep moving so we'll keep an eye on that area uh, 5.7 right now into the uh, Tonga trench area very shallow though uh, let's see here that's gonna be 5.7 not yet reviewed by a seismologist so this could get revised uh, looking at that signature, though, on the New Zealand station, I don't think it's going to get uh, upgraded. Um, but I'm not 100% certain on that, but it uh, doesn't look like too strong of a wave. So we'll just wait. Uh, kind of have to watch and see what they want to do with this magnitude. Either way, folks, um, I'm going to jump off here. Have yourself a good night uh, just after midnight here. California time, Tuesday, January 9th. Goodness. Hope everyone has a good day. And uh, we'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later on. After a few hours of sleep, take care and uh, stay safe out there, everyone. Peace out.